Raquel. Well, good morning. Good to be with you guys. Awesome day. Feels like uh, Resurrection Sunday Easter was way long time ago. But it was like last Sunday. I don't know if it, I'm, I'm alone in that, but man, feels like forever ago. So uh, we had just wrapped up a sermon series that was about three months long. And uh, we were, it, it, sermon series called Family Tree. We were unraveling the history of our spiritual ancestors. We were looking at a number of couples, uh, Adam and Eve. We started with Adam and Eve. And then other couples along the, the line, which were all in the lineage of Jesus, right? And so we're, we're looking at them. We were looking at what can we learn about God uh, through their stories. And we weren't just learning about like Abraham and Sarah. We were learning about God's attributes or nature through Abraham and Sarah. We were looking at how to find Christ in the passage, right? And so one, one thing, uh, one, one author writes it, every Old Testament story whispers the name of Jesus. And so my hope is to uh, continue to equip our church family and when we're reading any scripture in the Old Testament to see the themes of Christ to see the themes of how this can remind us of what Jesus has done or what Jesus has experienced and that's important because it leads us to worship him it leads us to think about him it, it leads us to be able to hear someone in the everyday about counselor conversation and be able to be like, I remember Jesus. He's our great counselor. And so the more we learn how to find and hear and see Christ in the text or in the scriptures, all the scriptures, the, the more we're going to be able to hear and be able to tie everyday life circumstances to Jesus. And that is going to be what, what ultimately saves us because Christ saves us, right? He redeemed us. He continues to redeem us when we experience hurts or traumas or whatever that might be. Christ is the answer. And so we went through this series. We ended it last weekend with the last couple. And the last couple actually uh, was Jesus. And some would say Mary Magdalene or someone like that, right? But the truth is Jesus is setting aside his, uh, for his bride, the church, right? And so we talked about the bride and we talked about Jesus and we talked about what is to come for the bride and what's to come for Jesus. And so we really went through all of the scriptures from start to finish in a nutshell. And once again, with hopes that we would grow in our understanding and relationship with Christ. And as I was doing that last week, I was preparing for a discussion weekend, which we do every three, four weeks or so, we try to discuss what we just preached. Because as I've been doing ministry and I've been pastoring people, there's a, 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 I have a pet peeve and that pet peeve is uh, all of the, the workings that God is stirring in me and convicting in me to share with people. And then it, you hear it and it's like, oh, that's amazing. And the, like two weeks later, you have no clue what was talked about and you're not applying anything to your life. And so every so often we stop and pause and say, what does it look like? Let's discuss this. Where's their tension? Where's their hardship? Where is their struggle for us to obey the scriptures? Or what does it look like for us to understand that more? I have a question about this. These weekends are set aside for that because uh, I, I really believe that we should walk like family, we should live like family, and we should continue to grow in our discipleship relationships with one another. I really care not about growing a Sunday experience, but I really care that the people who God has entrusted to, to me and the leadership of Living Roots to actually grow in their faith and be changed by the Spirit of God through the Scriptures and everything. And so... Uh, I, uh, I had prepared and prayed about Discussion Weekend this weekend, where we interact quite a bit. Uh, but truth be told, it may not be as discussion-driven as I had hoped, because I had a moment with the Lord this week, and 
uh, the phrase was, this must be shared. I, I need to share this. And it ties to, it was birthed out of what we just went through over the last several months. And uh, it's connected to knowing God's story, uh, the grand narrative of God's story. And then all the dozens upon dozens of micro stories that we went through, right? We just didn't learn about uh, uh, Abraham and Sarah in Genesis chapter 12. I shared story and background from a number of different stories about Abraham and Sarah over like nine chapters of the Bible. And the same thing with David and, and whatnot. So we went through a ton of micro stories that make up the overarching story of God. And I was thinking this week, how can I equip my church family to be able to share God's story with anyone in front of them? You might be thinking right now, I, I don't think I can ever do that. Or I, I don't know, I, I can't do that. There's no way. But I believe my role is to help you, one, know and understand you can, and it's part of God's plan for our lives is to share about him. And my role is to help it become simple enough for you to understand it, to share it. And so I, we have walked through already four different scenes that make up God's overarching story. You guys, I'm gonna share one, the first scene, and it should trigger your memory. Creation is the first scene of the four act storyline of God, right? Uh, what takes place or what comes to mind when you think of the m micro stories that, that feed into this overarching story of God connected to creation? What comes to mind when you think of creation? Right, So we can open up Genesis and look at and see a little bit of a really beautiful relationship that God had with his people, right? What else comes to mind when you think of creation? Potential and opportunity. Potential opportunity, that's good. What else comes to mind? Everything, Everything was perfect. God created perfection and man and woman was a part of that. And we could think about all the different elements that God created. We could think about how he, how in detail he created man and woman in his own image, right? So all these things are kind of encompassing Genesis chapter one and two are this beautiful picture of creation. And there's Psalms that speak, speak into creation and really develop that more, right? And so what's the next scene in the four scenes of God that I've taught over the years? fall right what comes in Genesis chapter 3 but it's not even titled fall right we have rebellion or fall I'm going to put fall because that's how I've uh, taught it but when I share with people God's story I never use the word fall never I always say rebellion so we'll get to that a little later and in this what can we talk about when we think of rebellion not just the story in the scripture but what can we think about big picture when it comes to rebellion? Anything. What comes to mind? Sin, sin right? It, brokenness. We could describe what sin looks like. We could describe the effects of sin, especially catering it towards who we're talking to and knowing their story. And that's not like wrong to do, but it's like it, 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 it hits home. And it's like, you're right. That is wrong. Wait, there's one who can fix that? Yeah, there's one who can fix that. And so all of that's wrapped up in the storyline of God connected to fall or rebellion. What's the next scene that I've taught over the last 10 years that comes after fall in the scriptures? It's a huge jump. Redemption. Good job, Cindy. That's what I'm talking about. Drop the mic right there. Redemption. Tell me who the Redeemer is. Jesus is the Redeemer. And all of the Old Testament whispers his name, points to this Redeemer. Jews still today are waiting for this Redeemer because they have in their mind picture of what it's going to look like, what he's going to look like. And really, when he comes back a second time, that's what they're waiting for. What he does then, judgment, bring justice, righting all the wrong, that's what they're waiting for. So that's what I think of when it comes to redemption. But it's a huge jump, right? And what's the fourth scene that comes to mind in God's story? Anybody could share again or whatever. 
restoration or recreation, same terms, where God is restoring all things back the way he originally created it to be, where he's recreating everything anew. Okay, so this is the storyline that I've taught over, over many, many, many years. And the, it's been like pared down to these four terms, hoping it would jog our memory to be able to share God's story with friends and family and others like on a napkin, right? But it doesn't always work that way. And then I was like, so this week I was wrestling, how can we, we just spent four months, three months going through these micro stories, hoping to find Christ, and then these overarching points to be able to say, now let's put it together, right? And it dawned on me, like six years ago, I got a bunch of tattoos with a tattoo artist. He was atheist. And this tattoo artist uh, made sure I knew he was atheist when I asked him to put two sleeves on my body and what I wanted on those sleeves. I said, I want to put God's story on my arms so I get to talk about him all the time. So I could be reminded of him all the time. And he's like, well, I want you to know I'm an, I'm an atheist. Is that okay? I said, I was hoping you were an atheist. <laughs> Because I know tattoos take a long time and maybe we can hang out and that can change. And, and so I said, he said, well, what stories? There's so many stories in the Bible. And I said, well, I emailed him literally six different scenes or storyline. In this storyline, I had six different scenes, but I'd been preaching four. So he came up with these images on my arms and he put them on my arms. We spent four hours, four and a half hours every three weeks for two and a half years. We didn't miss. I didn't get sick. He didn't get sick. We just, for two and a half years, I met and was under a needle for four and a half hours every three weeks. We went through the fires of Santa Rosa Coffee Park together. We went through uh, him moving together. I went, I got tattooed in three different parlors that he moved to. We, we became like really close. He invited, he invited me to Burning Man. He said, Art, you'd have so much fun at Burning Man. I'm like, I would. I've been wanting to go so bad. He's like, we got our own little setup. You know, me and my wife, it's going to be like mom and dad camp. And I'm like, what are you going to do? It's like, hand out like soap bar soap, help people take showers. I'm like, oh, that sounds great. So I started bringing him stuff and we had a great relationship. At the end of two and a half years, he said, that this was the third, and I've shared this before, third to last session with him. He says, Art, I can no longer say I'm atheist. I just want to let you know, we have gone through a ton. And I do have to say that I do believe there's a God. I'm not ready to say he's Jesus, but I do believe there's a God. There has to be. And it was such a cool experience. And, and then he checked in on me. I helped him move, you know, and he checked in on me and he says, hey, Art, uh, so how's it going? I said, I've gotten to use these tattoos already like 12 times, man, sharing stories in the gym. Someone came to faith in the gym through the storyline. And I'm a substitute teacher on the side. You guys know this. Uh, and uh, I'm constantly sh sharing. And I speak in a way, and I try to interact in a way that will cause people to ask, ask. And then I get a point to Jesus. And so this past uh, Thursday, this actually dawned on me on Wednesday that every time I share the story, I share six scenes. I don't share just four. And I don't say fall. People might, is it springtime, fall? Like, what are you talking about? I don't use that word. And, and so I want to introduce these six scenes for you guys. And I want to teach from now on these six scenes. And I hope to even pare it down to some symbols that we can all use to share our faith. And so here are the, the scenes. Creation is the first scene. The, the second is rebellion, formerly known as fall. <laughs> Promise is a new introduction scene and it's a transition scene 
to get us to redemption. And between redemption and recreation, we have kingdom because we're living in that now. And the, the last part of the scene is recreation or restoration. And so in this, every time I share the story using my tattoos or whatever it is, I walk through a little differently depending on who I'm talking to. I walk through creation, redemption, promise, or creation, rebellion, promise, redemption, and recreation. I don't expect you guys to have this memorized at the end of today, but just a reminder, we use Sundays, Living Roots use Sundays to equip the body of Christ, not to draw in pre-believers, to introduce them to God, because a lot of people, people will walk away not liking how much I talk about God. But I want to be very direct with my family. This is how we grow in teaching Jesus. And so I was sharing. So that was Wednesday. It dawned on me the six scenes. And then on Thursday, I go to sub at uh, Santa Rosa High School. I subbed an art class. These kids were really good at drawing. Uh, it was amazing, actually. And I made sure I wore a short sleeve shirt because I wanted to show some other kind of art. And I turned up the heat in the room like high just so it made sense that I was in a short sleeve shirt because it was cold outside. They're like, they're like, Mr. C, what's the deal? And so I'm in class, I'm, 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 I'm subbing and I do this every time. This is a, a, a beautiful, beautiful experience where I'm at the door and I welcome every student. I'm like, hey, good morning, great to have you today. And every high school, middle school student's like this. And they walk right by me. They're, they're, they're like, yeah, like I have no trust with them. They don't care about me. They don't trust, there was nothing. And I know that. And when I'm taking role, they look at me like this, like they hate me. And so I know I need to build trust. So I build trust through taking role. I connect names that I know that are, I'm like, oh, I have a sister named Jessica. Yeah, that's really cool. That name is close to my heart. Or, oh, my brother's name is Chris. And so I try to connect like that, right? By the end of uh, role. It takes like 10 minutes to take role the way I do it. A lot of times it's, it's, have you seen the skit that talks about A. Aaron or B. Lake? It's funny, a joke. That's my life every time I sub. I'm butchering all these names and I'm like, okay, God, this is hilarious. This name has five A's in it. Three of them are together. How do I pronounce that? And so I'm always goofing these things up. But at the end of it, it's more lighthearted. And then I spend the rest of the class, I teach people, okay, this is what your teacher wants you to do today. Whether you do it or not, it's not on me. I'm just here to make sure you're safe. And then I walk around class and I just share story and I ask questions. By the end of class, it's like, Mr. C, good to see you. Hope you're a sub again. It's not praise be to me, glory be to God. This specific Thursday, front right table, three girls and a boy, five minutes left in class, say, hey, is there like a story behind your tattoos or is it like random? Bunch of random experiences. I said, thank you so much for asking. It's actually one great story. It's the best love story in the world. And they're like, well, what is it? Once again, I try to share in a way that people want to ask questions. I said, well, you're giving me five minutes to tell a great long love story, so I'm going to try to pare it down. All right, so in the very beginning, and I don't always use the term God, but sometimes I do. I, and, and in a nutshell, I said, hey, I, so in the very beginning, this tree represents and these animals and this environment represent what is good. And on the other side is and they're like, that doesn't look so good. I said, you're right. This looks like a dead tree. And I paint a picture. There's also not good things that take place. In the very beginning, there was one who was known as the creator, created everything. And he had this loving relationship with man. And then there's this, this division between him and his loved, beloved people because they chose to not trust him. And along the way, there was this guy that had a, great trust in him 
His name was Abraham. And at this point, one of the girls said, this is the Bible. This is, this is the Bible. And, and I kept sharing. I'm like, hold on, hold on. Let me just keep sharing. And when we get to this part of the story, when, when God, God, and at this point I said, God, that creator, he made a great promise to this guy, Abraham, because of the love and trust they had together. He said, I'm going to bring through your family, your lineage, I'm going to bring someone who's going to fix, fix all the brokenness. And at that point I stopped and I said, you guys experience pain? They're all like this. You guys experience injustice? They're like this. You guys experience like not a loving home? And then two of them put their heads down. It's in our lives. It's our story. It's what we experience. And I said, well, this one that God promised is going to fix all that. He's going to reverse the decay. He's going to get rid of the scar. He's going to, and I just paint this picture. I'm already at creation, rebellion, and then I am in promise right now. And then I said, and so several years, and God like stamped that promise by saying, I'm going to give you a son to prove it. His name's Isaac. And at, I got to this point, the girl's like, I knew it. This is about the Bible. This is about God. And I said, okay, can I keep going? They're all like, yeah. And so I started sharing. I said, and eventually that promised son, that redeemer who's going to fix everything, he came and he started fixing it. He started fixing everything. And I started painting the picture of redemption. And then I said, and where we are right now is living in this already but not yet kingdom. It's like a subculture where people believe in this creator and people don't believe in this creator and so we still see the effects of sin and brokenness but in the midst of it God is reversing all the decay and then I talked about what we have to look forward to so it's just a story and in my head I'm just walking through these six scenes and that's what I put on my arms and what I have on my arms reminds me of these six different scenes so I was like how can I help my church family remember these six scenes. So I thought we'd all get tattoos, <laughs> right? We can all get some tattoos. You could do some little ones, be like, boom, creation, or you could get more creative, put some flowers. No, seriously, though, I was thinking, how can we turn these images into maybe some symbols? And how can we connect the symbols to these words? And I had this idea because there's another church family in our Soma connected families in Arizona that had done that very thing. And I'm like, and that was brought, I was reminded, the spirit reminded me of that on Thursday. So I texted my buddy, Kevin, and I'm like, dude, Kevin, can I steal your guys' images? I want to teach those to our church family because I really believe it's going to help us share God's story like on a napkin with these images. He says, that's the very reason why we created them four years ago. And so the symbols is telling the story, creation, God came down. Using the term, God came down and he did all this, right? We know the spirit hovered over the earth, verse one and two of Genesis chapter one. And we just start painting the picture of creation. And so Creation has this arrow that God has come to us. God has created this environment for us. And then there was this rebellion, which is represented in this not good symbol. Like, you got that wrong, right? We got this wrong. And then the next is, there's this promise though, but wait, there's more, right? The point of last weekend's message, God's is, Jesus basically can say, hey, there's more coming. There is more, there's this promise, and the next would be redemption. Obviously, a cross would fit well here. And the next scene is kingdom, which, remember, promise and kingdom are like transition story points. And that's represented as we're continuing to move forward, pointing to this promise. And the last one is recreation. God's going to recreate again. And so I'm introducing this today. On May 13, on our Soma one day, we're going to teach this in depth, okay? So I really would encourage our church family. We're partnering with another Soma family church in Petaluma, and uh, Daniel Husky and I, we're going to co-teach, and a lot of their church family is going to join us, and we're going to spend all day together going through some teachings on how to grow in Jesus. 
And so these are the symbols that, that came to mind for my, my buddy Kevin and his friend Chris. And they were literally in front of a whiteboard like four or five years ago, like how can we pare down God's story, the gospel in such a way our church family can apply it to their lives and share it with their friends. And they boiled it down to these symbols and have turned it into this. Creation, rebellion, promise, redemption, kingdom, and recreation. These are the symbols we are stealing with his permission. He was so excited that we're going to continue. Because I don't, why, why redo the work, right? Why don't you just use what the body of Christ is using? And, and so these symbols are, are, are ones to remind us in how to share the story. So eventually, we could, we could just see the symbol, no, this is creation. Right now, today, I don't expect you guys to know this. But uh, tomorrow, I do. Just kidding. That's a joke. Because the point is, we walk together as family. There's discipleship among one another, and we continue to grow in our relationship. And by God's grace, the people in our lives start to grow in their relationship and trust with Jesus. So when you think of creation, when you think of creation, as we've gone through family tree and we went through creation, when we talked about Adam and Eve, when we go through creation, what comes to mind when you think of creation? This could be from the scriptures, or it can be using that to, as a springboard to real life circumstances today. What comes to mind when you think of creation? Made new. Made new, right? So when you're hanging out with a neighbor and there's something that's not new or needs to be, be made new, you can use that to point to God and what God is doing, what he's done through creation in the beginning and how he's called us to co-create with him and how he's going to fix it all in the end. And that could be literally a 30-second conversation. But it's trying to teach our church family how to use these symbols, use these terms to go into what we know to be true in God's word. What, what else comes to mind with creation? What's that? Eden. Eden. Talk about Eden. What is that? What is eating? Is eating a, a restaurant? <laughs> yeah, it's perfect creation. And then we can start painting a picture of what the brokenness in our life looks like perfected. God can fix that. God fixes those things. What else comes to mind? New creation. Yeah, when someone chooses Christ, 2 Corinthians chapter two, two, right? 5, 17. Uh, when it's like, I th this here, when we choose, yes, we enter this greater storyline because all of us live this lesser story up until we meet Jesus. And then we're like introduced to the greater purpose, the greater storyline. So a recreation in our own lives where we're, we're, or a new creation in our own lives. That's good. Did you have your hand up? No. Okay. Um, so when you see this down arrow, what do you think of? It, it, what's that? God came down. Yeah, God came down. God came down. And then the X, what comes to mind when you think of X? What's that? It's not good. It's rebellion. Paint the picture of rebellion. Paint the picture of rebellion, anybody. Wanting it my own way. What else? Say it again. Idolatry. Say it again. I can't hear you. Disobedience. Exactly. What else comes to mind? Other terms, other experiences? Yeah. Rejection of God's good plan, choosing our own plan over his plan. Yeah. Uh, war, and opposition. war and opposition. Yeah. Disorder. What else comes to mind? Chaos. Chaos. So when we're sitting down, hanging out with a friend, and these terms are coming out, our mind should trigger X, rebellion. You know, there's good news. 
I know it really doesn't feel good what you're going through and you can empathize where you have rebellion in your life, where you have disorder in your life. You could enter their storyline and join them in their suffering and then share about this promise that we have. This is what I cling to. And so once again, it's using the situations in life and jumping into the greater storyline with God because this is good news for all people. What comes to mind when you think of the forward arrow? with promise hope yeah now when I went through uh, Abraham and we talked about Abraham and Sarah where does Abraham and Sarah fit on these symbols where do they fit which which symbol which scene of the storyline the first yeah the promise they fit right in the promise exactly when we talked about the sin of David where does that fit Rebellion. Even though he's beyond literally in the Bible, the promise season, you have these themes like this, where we're, he experienced hope, he experienced that promise, he experienced redemption too. And so we have that. And so where, whereabouts does uh, Jesus, when I shared last week several parables, when, when I talked about the fertile soil and the four different soils, where does that fit on the storyline? It fits where? Redemption. It fits in redemption, right? He's talking about the kingdom. He's talking about what's at hand. But everything to do with Jesus' birth, all of his life, anything he's ever said, and his death and resurrection is all in redemption. All of it. And there's moments where it's literally the redemptive story, but it's all in that scene where he's bringing things right. Right? And so then we also talked about the kingdom's like, right? Jesus said the kingdom's like a mustard seed. He said it's like a treasure buried in a field. All of this is pointing to the next scene. This is what it's like, right? Uh, then we talked about the last part, the bride and the groom are gonna have a great feast. There's gonna be once again perfection like the garden. What scene is that? Recreation. Recreation. So, as we look at the symbols, which one represents the promise? The first forward arrow. Which one represents redemption? The cross. That's an easy one, right? Which one represents the kingdom? The the next forward arrow, right? The last forward arrow. We're, and that's the kingdom we're living in now. That's where we're existing today. And where's creation? It's the first down arrow. Recreation, the last down arrow. And rebellion is the X. My hope is for us that we would be able to continue to learn God's story, continue to be in God's word, and soon, very soon, if not already happening, you're going to be hearing the Holy Spirit put names of people, situations on your heart to live in obedience today, to bring to fruition the kingdom today. The kingdom of God is at hand. And it's all birthed out of the Spirit, Jesus' Spirit, whom he left with us, right? And so the, the hope is, as we read the scriptures as we're listening to the Holy Spirit, as we fellowship with the believers, as I cont we continue to teach one another, we'll continue to grow. And this is going to be like second nature. And soon there will be, I don't have the reverse image where there's no symbols, but soon you can write these symbols down. Like on Wednesday, I didn't know what these symbols were because I, I just had the idea and I was reminded that my brother's already done the work to tie the story together like this. And so the hope is that we would grow in being able to communicate God's story. We may not all feel comfortable sharing it today, but I guarantee you, there are men, women, boys and girls in your life, whether you're a high school or college student or you're in a career, there are people around us that would be blessed if you were able to introduce them to the promised one. 
And I'm not saying you sit down and you have to force them to believe that Jesus is their Lord and Savior and they need to pray right then on your lunch break. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is using God's story in everyday language, giving them the gospel, the message of hope, Christ and Christ alone, which is where I struggled with my friend Cooper because I could have agreed and said, yeah, you're amazing. You're amazing. Well, truth is, no, we're all actually rebellious. That's the truth. We're rebellious. Whether, I know this was an accident for you, but all our hearts are that we're rebellious. we rather do what we want to do and not what God wants for us. But there is one, and point to the hope, the one where who is truly amazing. And then we'll feel good in that, especially if we're covered by him and have chosen to follow him as our Lord and Savior. Is there questions at all connected to how this all fits together or what I'm talking about? Want me to repeat anything, share anything? Any questions? Right? Amen. That's good. Yeah, that's why we gather in gospel communities during the week, you know, smaller family groups that are constantly connecting. My hope, my, so here's, here's the homework. The homework is this next gospel, if you're part of a gospel community, or if you're not, if you can figure out how to do this, uh, walk somebody of our church family through this, even though they know it or they've heard it as well. Just like, hey, I'm going to try to practice this. Do you mind if I use this napkin and I use this pen and I just try to practice sharing God's story with these symbols I learned? That's pretty, pretty good. That's okay to ask. Is that good? Is that okay? Awesome. Any other comments, questions, concerns, root remarks, encouraging statements, famous quotes? Rhyming riddles. Awesome. Well, today, like I said, today's discussion weekend was slightly different because I really had a huge burden on my heart for us to not just learn and hear a lot of mini micro stories in the scripture, but see how they fit in the overarching plan and really taking it a step further in encouraging us to be a part of sharing that plan and story because there's people who would be blessed to hear this story. And so... Father, we, we do encourage, we are encouraged by your love for us, how you have come down and you continue to seek first us in that right relationship. I thank you that you have uh, sacrificed your son, Jesus. Jesus, I thank you for your life of obedience where you never lived out rebellion. You didn't have that part in your story and I give you thanks I give you thanks that you wore that rebellion of ours on your shoulders and experienced separation from our God, the Father. I thank you, Jesus, so much that you have continued to live and, and, and give us credit. Those who've placed faith in you, give, given us credit for the life you've lived. So ultimately, we, through the bloodshed of Jesus, do not have an X on our lives either. And that's something to praise. Holy Spirit, I know your role in the scriptures and in our lives is to remind us of the scriptures, remind us of you, of God, of Jesus. I know, Holy Spirit, your role is to remind us even of these symbols and be able to articulate and share with people. So I give you thanks in advance for all that work that you're gonna do in and through our lives do pray that you would continue to empower us to live active lives in Christ, not minimizing this walk with you to just attending church service and being religious, but actually living and participating with you in a real-time way. I give you thanks in that, Lord. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.